this talk about is about John Barrow as he discusses uh, Boscovich's theory of everything. The talk that he gives is at that link there, and it is my position that Boscovich's theory of the 18th century is unified field theory, and that after this, due to the influence of Einstein, that modern physics has gone wrong. So when they're in their quest for unified field theory, it's really in the 18th century, and they've been diverted on to the wrong track by Einstein. So this is where the talk is. It's the person, uh, Professor uh, Barrow, John Barrow, and he's uh, he has been a professor of mathematical sciences at the University of Cambridge since 1999 and so forth. Uh, he's, he's the author of over 420 articles and 19 books. Uh, so, I'm going to go on to him now. He's going to give a little talk about theory of everything. If we go down here, this is what he's saying in the talk. This talk is called Theories of Everything, and he's telling us the idea of theory of everything, a way of predicting and understanding everything that we see in the world is a tantalising idea for the human mind but it's by no means a new idea we don't only find it in the realms of modern particle physics and science if you look in your history books you well I don't like the he's saying it's early myths and legends but really it's the unified field theory starts from Boscovich and he's going to go into that a bit of time to load up. It's going to, the overview is saying what do physicists mean by a theory of everything and what do they mean by everything. Um, so it's the overview. Ever since 1982. Oh here we go, we're going now at last. Enlarge. Go. The idea of a theory of everything, a way of predicting and understanding everything that we see in the world, is a tantalizing idea for the human mind. But it's by no means a new idea. We don't only find it in the realms of modern particle physics and science. If you look back in your history books to the early myths and legends about the beginnings of the world, what characterizes those stories about the nature of everything around us is their desire to be totally complete, to leave... So, ancient man, whatever, was trying to have a comprehensive uh, understanding of the universe and they came up with their myths and stories to try to make sense Absolutely of it. Absolutely nothing out of the story. Everything that could be seen in the world had a meaning and it was a place for everything and everything had its place in the created order. Nothing was left unexplained. So you can see this idea of complete explanation is a sort of hallmark of a certain type of fantastic description of the world that often has ourselves located at the centre. In modern times, physicists have attempted to produce a so-called theory of everything. And it's in this talk I want to tell you about some of the ways in which they progress towards doing that and what the current state of play looks like. The first conception of a theory of everything in the modern sense goes back about 250 years to a Croatian physicist called Roger Boscovich, who uh, spent much of his life in Venice as the scientific advisor to the Pope, and he was a great admirer of Newton's work 300 years ago, and he set about extending it to include descriptions of certain things that Newton could not provide an explanation for. And in his famous book of 1758, Boscovich announces that he has a single force law, a rule which would enable people to deduce everything from a single law of forces. 
And here's a picture of that unusual theory of everything of Boscovich's. It's just a picture of how a law of force here varies with the distance between two objects that are being acted upon by the force. And the force on his rather messy 18th century drawing is this asymmetry curve that eventually asymptotes off to the zero line down here. Where the curve is above this axis, the force is repulsive, and where the curve is below it, it's attractive. So at very large distances, it just looks like Newton's law of gravitation. But down here at short distances, it's occasionally repulsive and occasionally attractive. What he has in mind is that the places where the curve crosses the zero line are places where there is no overall force on things. There are equilibria there. So if you have objects in the world, whether they're people, atoms, rocks, planets, they will be located at those equilibrium points. So what Boscovich realized was that in order to explain why there are stable objects in the universe, it's not enough just to have forces of attraction. You have to have countering forces of repulsion so the two can come into balance and we can have the equilibrium states that we see in the world. Uh, and that, that idea was used for uh, quantitized orbits of the electrons around the nucleus of an atom. And it certainly led on to quantum physics. So th this is the book I was in with. It's uh, Roger Boscovich, a founder of modern science. And it's by Drak, my friend here. Uh, Dragoslav Stokovich, I've translated it, and it's uh, uh, Boscovich provided the foundations of modern science. This book deals with the historical context of Boscovich's unified field theory along with recent applications. And here is the force curve of uh, Boscovich. So it's as per what uh, Professor Barrow is talking about it's a unified theory. It's uh, and he doesn't go into the details, but quantum physics was built upon this idea, and also Boscovich dealt with relativity, and this is all in the 18th century. So you got a unified theory of relativity and quantum physics, and after that you had the influence of Einstein, and from my point of view. Einstein created lots of mistakes, hence this then comes a split between relativity theory and quantum physics. So if you go back to Boscovich, you've got a unified theory, and it's uh, minus the mistakes that Einstein brought into physics. And so basically, if people were more aware of Boscovich, they could look at Boscovich's theory and say, what's going on here? We've got in the 18th century unified theory. Why did what, what happened in the 20th century when suddenly the, the theory uh, theory split into two? We split between Einstein's uh, relativity theory and quantum physics. Why was there suddenly a split? So that would cause more lines of interest of research. But Boscovich is a little-known theory. It's not something at universities normally teach their students. Well, after Boscovich, there weren't many successful forays into the business of finding a theory of everything. In the 20th century, there were two heroic failures by uh, very great scientists. The first was Arthur... So, this is the 20th century, and suddenly you have having failures for a unified theory. Well, Einstein's supposed to be trying to get a unified field theory is usually thought of not being successful and you also got Arthur Eddington who was trying to do a unified theory which he was talking about as a fundamental theory and I generally thought as failures but in the case of Einstein with the people who were working on a unified field theory with Einstein they were sort of like aware of Boscovich's theory to some extent and so they were working on along similar lines. So why has modern physics uh, suddenly 
uh, being so lax upon uh, looking at unified field theory. If I go to my videos, uh, I think at the end. Still getting so many of these now. Uh, I've got things like Boscovich talks at Manchester and go back to nine. Uh, there are. I had a few got a few things here about people talking about Einstein's unified field theory uh, where, where they talk about how Einstein uh, tried uh, different uh, approaches to try to find a unified field theory but they don't seem to be mentioned in Boscovich so it's uh, they've this sort of uh, physics is not too well known so I've got, there we go, that's the book. So that explains how Boscovich's theory is connected to quantum physics. And it's really, if physicist people were more aware of the history, they, they would uh, be aware, they would know that there was a unified field theory in the 18th century. And so the question to ask them is, what went wrong? What went wrong? And I'd say what went wrong was Einstein. He added a lot of mistakes into physics. We can find where my talk is there. Back, back to again. So let's back on to what John Barrow has to say. Stanley Eddington, the person who taught us how the stars work, who was responsible for the first test of Einstein's theory of general relativity, and much else besides. And Eddington was fixated with the idea of what he called a fundamental theory. This he did largely by numerological tricks. He wanted to try and explain all the constants of nature in terms of other constants of nature and just coincidences between uh, mathematical formulae. This really came to nothing. He died in 1944 with the work unfinished uh, and often undergoes, I think, quite a lot of criticism uh, and even ridicule for the whole program. Albert Einstein himself took up the quest for a fundamental theory, which he called a unified field theory in the latter part of his career. He was anxious to extend his theory of gravity to include other forces like electromagnetism. But at the time of his death, this work was still unfinished uh, and little understood by anyone else. Looking back, there's little of it really that has been of any uh, interest and consequence. One of the problems for both of these great scientists was that they were premature in their search for a unified theory. You see, they didn't really even have straight what it was that needed to be unified. Einstein was trying to join together electricity, the magnetism, and the force of gravity. He ignored completely the strong nuclear forces and the forces of radioactivity. So the moral of the story is that if you want to unify forces of nature, it's very important to understand what it is that needs unifying and what are the truly fundamental ingredients that you need to include in the story. Well, today we think that we understand what are the bits that need unifying. We know there are four very different so I don't think it's sort of like relevant. I want to get back to the issue of Einstein. Einstein was uh, diverted us on to mistakes. So what we got with Boscovich, we've got the force law here obeying this, and people who have looked at this force law do connect that to the other forces of nature. You've got the gravity bit up there, and then the rest of it that's it's following uh, the weak and the strong and the electromagnetic force it's all part of this so what you really got is you've got a unified field theory for the various forces and 
what uh, this person is not doing is he's not explaining how uh, Einstein is connected to the unified field theory of Boscovich. It's sort of a sudden jump and he's not explaining, going into the details of how uh, the 18th century unified field theory uh, led on to modern physics and how Einstein then introduced a lot of mistakes. So this is basically it. He uh, doesn't seem to realise that that Einstein made a lot of mistakes. And if you go back to my videos, uh, I'll go back to, I've got lots of them too many now. one here, like Einstein's cuckoo process, uh, where uh, G. Bernstein Brown explains that what Einstein did when he constructed up his theory of relativity, or his theories, uh, what Einstein was doing didn't really make sense. So I've got these videos explaining what Einstein did didn't make any sense. So if you sort of, sort of recognise what Einstein doing doesn't make sense, go back in history to when things made sense and what of course what you've got is you've got a unified field theory with Roger Boscovich and so that's where basically physics has gone wrong they've, they've followed Einstein and they've gone on onto a wild diversion from what was a unified field theory in the 18th century uh, and that's basically it Thank you.